Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. The scripture has already been read into your hearing, but I just want to lift up a couple of verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, uh, reading from God's Word translation. It says, Don't you know that your body is a temple that belongs to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit whom you received from God lives in you. You don't belong to yourselves. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in the way you use your body. Bring glory to God in the way you use your body. Let us pray. O oh, wise and eternal God, we come before you this morning thanking you for who you are. We thank you that you are an all-wise, omnipotent God and that there is nothing you cannot do. And so God, we are grateful on this first Sunday in May, oh God, that you have allowed us to see. Lord, we are grateful for our health and our strength, and God, we thank you for everything you have given us. Lord, we realize that all uh, have, have not been well in this season, but God, it has not been all bad. And so God, for that, we say thank you. So God, wherever we find ourselves today, God, whether we're swinging from the chandeliers with joy or whether, God, we feel a little down in the dumps, you are still God and you are able to lift us up out of the depths of despair. So God, I pray now that you would speak a word this morning that would encourage somebody. Speak a word that would strengthen somebody. Speak a word that would even convict somebody. Speak a word, God, that will change a life in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray now that you get all the honor and the glory. Decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Have your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. So bring glory to God in the way you use your body. Pray with us on this harmonic thought, better choices, better health. Better choices, better health. Theo, this one's for you. You did this. Theo Jones did this. <laughs> Life is full of choices. Not one day goes by that you have to make a decision about something. But be clear, even when you choose not 
to choose. You have made a choice. It is our choices that determine our experiences. The choices we are making today will show up in our lives in the future. All of your life, you make choices, whether you want it to or not. We have to decide what to wear and what we can fit in. Lord, have mercy. Are your clothes still fitting right a year later? Keep looking straight ahead. Or are they a little tighter uh, and a little more uncomfortable as a result of those pandemic pounds? High school seniors have to decide what college or university they are going to attend in the fall. We have to decide who our circle of friends is going to be. In life, you have to choose whether to get married or stay single. And if you are married, sometimes you have to choose whether to stay married. Keep looking straight ahead. In marriage, you should have learned by now that you have to choose what you are going to comment on and what you are going to keep your mouth shut about. You can't comment on everything and you can't let everything your spouse does make you mad. If you comment about everything your spouse does, then perhaps, okay, I'm going to let y'all figure that one out. Life, however, is about choices. Uh, you, you have to make decisions on even whether you're going to attend the virtual church every Sunday. You have to decide, even in the virtual setting, whether you're going to be on time or whether you're going to be late. You have to decide whether you're going to give God the tithe or whether you're going to continue giving him that $5. You have to decide, Lord have mercy, how you want to wear your hair, sisters, or whether you want it long, whether you want it shorter, whether you want it braided as we quickly move into the summer seasons. You have to decide if you want to add a little color in your hair or cover that gray. Lord have mercy. Keep, keep looking straight ahead. But God has given us the gift of choice and it is a wonderful gift. The choices we make today will have impact on our lives today and tomorrow. Choices establish a pattern and a foundation for our lives. Who you are tomorrow is determined determined by the choices you make today. Every choice you make today will impact your life tomorrow. And so the question becomes, will you live a life of obedience or will you live a life of self-will? Every day you make decision after decision about your obedience. Will you do God's life God's way or will you do life your own way? Will you follow your own desires, your fleshly nature? or will you follow the leadings and promptings of the Holy Spirit? It is God's intention that we be completely healthy in mind, body, soul, and spirit. And one of the major preconditions in walking in divine health is that we choose to walk in obedience to God's will. As a matter of stewardship, we should attempt to maintain good health. While we will occasionally become ill, wellness should always be our goal. Your health is your wealth. And we need to remember that faith is not just spiritual. God is concerned about our physical bodies. He's given us these bodies and his will is for us to take care of these bodies. After all, God is the owner of our body. We are simply the managers. We cannot blame anybody else for how we use misuse or abuse our body because we have been given management control over our bodies. Lord have mercy. Help me Jesus. Our body is a gift from God. Our body is on loan from God and one day church we will have to give an account of what we did with this body and what we did to this body. God will want to know one day what did you do with the health that I gave you? What did you do with the mind that I gave you? What did you do, Lord have mercy, with that mouth that I gave you? What did you do with the hands I gave you? What did you do with the time, the talents, and the gifts and treasures? What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with the abilities?
ability and the opportunities I afforded you. God will ask, how did you use the energy that I gave you? Because you are the caretaker of this body. You and I must give an account to God for everything that we do in this body. Oh my God, this I'm feeling this. This thing is personal here today. And so while you may have the freedom to do what you want to do, you do not have the right to, to do what you want to do with your body because when you correctly understand the scriptures, your body belongs to God. And so to obey the biblical command to honor God in your body means that you choose not to engage in activities that are destructive to your body. Lord, have mercy. That is overeating and constantly eating the wrong foods and drinking in excess and smoking. Other factors related to being good stewards of our bodies. It includes managing that stress in your life, getting the proper rest, and Cheryl making sure you're walking every day. Keep looking straight ahead, Cheryl. Keep looking straight ahead. I, I was walking a few days ago in the community and saw Theo Jones, and, and, and I commend Theo and Zella because they have walked over 400 consecutive days in rain, sleet, snow, cold, bitter temperature. They have walked over 400 days, O-M to the G. And when Theo had stopped me, uh, he was in the car and I was walking, he shared, uh, with, we just began to talk uh, about our health and the fact that none of us in here are getting any younger. Every one of us uh, has gotten older just uh, in the few seconds that we've been in this virtual space. And Theo began to share about how he and Zella were taking care of themselves. He, he shared with me that they were doing meat Meatless Mondays ooh, and meatless Thursday and Thursdays. And as a result, they have seen the results in their physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. He shared that there were times, there were some days that he wanted to take a break. And he said to Zella, I'm telling it all now, Theo. He said to Zella, Zella, can we just take a break one day? Zella said, No, we got to press on. But what a marvelous testimony of choices they have made. Uh, uh, Theo shared with me, he had had his mouth set for, for a hot dog and, uh, and Zella with her creative cooking and culinary skills had fixed up a carrot. Theo didn't know, but when he bit into it, he thought he was biting into a hot dog and he bit into a carrot. Oh my God, what a wonderful testimony of how they are treating their body, this body that God God has given us stewardship of our bodies. You can give me later, Theo. <laughs> stewardship of our bodies involves our entire lifestyle, and it is a long life effort. We are called by God to take care of our bodies for better and longer service to the Lord. God is concerned about our entire being, and some folk might have the notion that God only cares about the spiritual and not the physical, and if we think that God God loves our soul and is not interested in the well-being of our body, that is incorrect thinking and nothing could be further from the truth. God is concerned about our whole person. God desires wholeness and soundness of mind, body, and spirit. That's why Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. A healthy and mature Pure spirituality embraces the body, soul, mind, and spirit. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Uh-oh. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, this scripture, it doesn't say the life I live in the spirit, because truth be told, we're not in the spirit all the time. Keep looking straight ahead. As a matter of fact, most of the time during the course of a day, you and I are 
are not in the spirit, but we are always in this body. And so the life I live, I now live in the body. I live by faith. Physical righteousness is often overlooked in the scriptures and health in general is probably the most abused and neglected gift we receive from God on a daily basis. But 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says your body is the temple of God. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not your own. Honor God with your body because it is the dwelling place. God lives in here. It is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Listen, church, the first century Christians were well acquainted with the temples and the purpose of the temple. We need to understand what the characteristics of the temple were. The temple was set apart for the express purpose of worship. And everything in the temple, all of its instruments and all of the furniture were dedicated to the purpose of bringing glory to God. The temple was a place where the glory of God was manifest. It was the place where the presence of God dwelt. And what would you think about a person who came into a church building and started spray painting the walls with graffiti? What would you think of a person who came in the church and started tearing up the church furniture and Donald Francis cutting up the carpet, oh my God, and tearing down the pulpit? Would you be okay with that? Of course not. But that's the way we treat our bodies. We vandalize the temple of God by what we put in it, but how we don't take care of it, by how we fail to do with it what we're supposed to do. You put anything in your body. You lay down with anybody. You smoke. You drink. You over. You you overeat. Wait, 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 wait. No, we, we, not you, we, because I'm in this too. We smoke. We drink. We snort. We have too many prescription drugs and do whatever we want to do with our temple. We pollute our body, which is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Come on here, help me, Jesus. The priest in the Old Testament could not go into the temple unclean. The priest had to wash on the outside of the temple at the labor. They had to purify themselves. And when they went into the Holy of Holies, they had to put bells on the bottom of their rope that was on, on the bottom of their robes that was tied around their waist. They went into the temple and when the people heard the bells, they knew that the priests was in the presence of God. If they didn't hear the bells, they knew that the priest was dead. Why? Because he had defiled his temple. He had gone in unclean and God just don't play that. You can come in the temple. You cannot come in the temple any kind of way and you cannot treat this body any kind of way and not have consequences. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Jesus! Woo! By saying our bodies were the temple of God, Paul was teaching that our bodies are to be free of sin and separated to the service of the Lord. Our bodies are to be clean and free of sinful habits and we are to be wholly dedicated to the Lord. Our temple is the place where the glory and the presence of God is manifest. God cares about our bodies. Our bodies matter to God. God wants our body to be healthy. The next time you sit down, why don't you ask yourself, don't you know when you get ready to put those potato chips in your mouth, not, not one or two, but I'm talking, oh Theo, here we go. The whole bag a hollow is Lord have mercy. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? When you get ready to eat that bucket of fried chicken, 
Don't you know that your body is the temple of God when you get ready to unwind at night and have that whole bottle of wine? Oh, yes. You got to ask yourself, don't you know that this body is the temple? According to the Pew Research many years ago, blacks, they found that blacks are the most religious group. We attend the most worship services, give religious instruction more, pray more, and believe that God exists more. We are the most religiously committed ethnic group in the nation, yet we are the sickest. We have more heart attacks, more arthritis, more high cholesterol, more high blood pressure, more diabetes, more knee replacements, more hip replacements, more amputations, Reputations and more cancer. Many African American, Latinx, and indigenous communities have high rates of underlying health conditions, which include diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. Lord have mercy. These are the known risk factors for, for, for severe illness and death from COVID 19. And we all know that the Afri African American community has died more from COVID-19 to underlying health conditions. And we are literally digging our graves with our forks. Okay, you don't use a fork, you use your fingers by eating French fries and chips and candies and cookies. You don't use a fork with those things, but we are digging our graves with our fingers. America suffers from an epidemic in obesity, and the church is no exception. We go to church more, and yet we are the sickest. We pray the most, but yet our prayers don't keep us alive any longer. We praise God, we cry and shout, we jump for joy, but we go to heaven sooner. Does that sound right? Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. People join virtually week after week and listen to God's message whether you're here or wherever you're church hopping in the virtual space and you'll hear about the abundant life you'll hear about God wants more for you God will help you God will heal you God will deliver you God will transform your life and you leave the virtual service and continue with unhealthy habits we continue to live unhealthy lifestyles with unhealthy choices and we eat too many unhealthy unhealthy foods. We have got to do better, better choices, better health. People are so preoccupied, even in this season, with making more money than taking care of your health. You're working yourself to the bone. And the truth of the matter is, is that you are working so much, uh, even in your home. You're not even going into the job. Some of you are, but you're working so much uh, that you're not taking care of yourself. You're running and ripping uh, so much of the time and not taking care of yourself. There are consequences uh, to this kind kind of lifestyle and then you combine overworked with all the stress and combine that with an unhealthy diet I guarantee you you're not living an abundant life as a result of being overworked and stressed out then you eat you eat out more than you cook why because it's easy after all Jan who has time to cook just go grab something get a greasy burger and fries that greasy fried chicken, a piece of full of grease, greasy steaks, a greasy fried fish, greasy pork, a sugary sodas and fruit drinks and caffeinated coffee. All the fast food restaurants are competing for your business, so why not? Not only the fast food, but the other restaurants too. And it's okay if you get sick. These McDonald's french fries sure is good with the tomato ketchup, uh-huh. It's okay if you get sick because the pharmaceutical companies advertise drugs for everything from high blood pressure, 
high cholesterol, diabetes, arthritis. Let me just share this. I remember I had gone to the doctor a few years ago, and she wanted to put me on this, uh, these diet pills to lose some of this weight. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm like, well, I, I don't really want to take any pills, and so I, 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 didn't, I didn't do it. But when I got to the counter to pay for the lady, she could see it in the records, and she said, don't get on this medicine. Because she said, when you get on this medicine, it really messes up your body from what you can do on your own just by eating fruits and vegetables. Well, I never got on those pills. Uh, did I lose any weight? Don't judge me. It's coming. <laughs> I, I just put something out there. <laughs> I just put something out there. Cheryl, a whole year, but it's coming. Theo, a whole year, but it's coming. You know, we have to go through what we go through and get to where we need to get, but it's coming. It's coming. I am taking authority over this body, taking authority over potato chips, taking authority over pizza, taking authority over Golden Corral fried chicken every Sunday. Take thou authority. Because this is God's body. And I don't want to be on any medication. Lord have mercy. Let, let me hasten. Our, our four groups, the four food groups in our culture are sugar. You know, back in the day, they used to call Yeah, that's what they used to call it, uh, Deborah, sugar. They, they, they never referred to it as diabetes. They said, that person has sugar. <laughs> sugar, salt, fat, white flour, and processed foods. We got to make a conscious decision to be healthier because God wants a body that is healthy. We have to make an investment in our own lives. And so this week, church, I want to challenge all of us. Lynette, I'm coming. Lynette, Lynette Wilcox is such an inspiration. She has a group on Facebook, Practically Sound Health, or something to that effect. And Lynette, I'm going to encourage you to go out there and, and search for it. Lynette has shared her journey and turned out. Lynette is the epitome of health. <laughs> uh, but she, 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 I'm telling all y'all all y'all stuff, and I know y'all can get me later, but it's okay. It'll help somebody else, amen. Uh, and maybe y'all won't tell me anything else, but it's okay too. <laughs> but she shared, you know, her, her struggle sometimes with, with, with what, what to eat. But she grew up in a home where they ate healthy. And that has really carried over into her adult life. And so, my beloved brothers and sisters, even with our children, we got to start teaching our children now how to eat right. Child obesity has risen beyond what we could ever think or imagine in this country. And so this week, I want to issue a challenge to eat right and work out if you're not doing it already. It's about discipline. You may struggle at first, but stay with it. Look to God. He will give you the strength that you need. Go in with the right attitude. No matter where you are, you didn't get where you are in one day, and it's not going to happen overnight. Our bodies have been bought with a price. Our bodies don't belong to us. They belong to God. Honor God with your body. Will you choose to follow God in making healthy choices? Better choices, better health. Amen. This has been the First AME Church Manassas special online worship service. We pray that you were truly blessed and encourage you to share this message with everyone you know. We temporarily switched to this special online worship service for the health and safety of our congregation and those that worship with us and strongly urge everyone to follow the directions of health professionals to keep you, your family, and loved ones safe. We also ask that you continue to regularly support 
First AME Church of Manassas through your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. Or you can give online at famechurch.com forward slash giving. Or you can mail your contributions to First AME Church of Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, we pray that you were blessed by today's message and encourage you to share it, post it, and bless somebody else with a word from God. And most importantly, let us continue to pray for our world, our leaders, and health professionals, as well as the most vulnerable among us. Be safe and be blessed. Thank you.